Hello everyone, it's Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and we're here with another video review. Obviously um, today has seen um, the launch of the AMD Radeon HD7950. Now I'm not quite sure when we're going to be releasing this video but we were recording it today which is Tuesday the 31st. So regardless, what I say is relevant to today when I'm actually recording it. Um, even though I might not be releasing this video until tomorrow, but we'll, we'll see how things go. So we've already looked at the XFX Radeon 7950 um, Black Edition with the double dissipation uh, cooler, uh, which is um, quite a good card really. Uh, the performance of it was fantastic. It beat the GTX 580 in pretty much everything apart from Formula One um, 2011, which is obviously geared more towards Nvidia. But other than that, it was a great card. Um, temperature wise, it kept things nice and cool. And then um, in terms of just general performance, it was a great card. A little bit on the expensive side, but uh, we can see prices coming down after the actual launch has happened. In a couple of days, weeks, months time, you're going to see prices drop into a more respectable level. But by then, we may see uh, some results from NVIDIA and Kepler. But for now, we're focused all on AMD. And obviously, we've done the XFX one, and one of the other partners that we work with is Sapphire. So Sapphire has sent us the Sapphire... HD 7950 uh, overclocked edition. So this is going to be, in my eyes, very very similar to the XFX, but uh, slightly different in terms of the cooler that's on there, the design of it. Uh, but performance-wise, we should see some very similar results. And the fact that we've now got this as well as the XFX card does also mean that we've got the facility to do Crossfire, which is something that we're really excited about. And hopefully, we're going to see out of the XFX one and this one in another sort of review article. Uh, how far one of them could be pushed. We're going to see which one we can push the furthest, really, uh, because there is said to be a lot of headroom in the 7950s, as we saw in the 7970. So that's pretty much what we're going to do today. So just like the XFX review and some of the latest stuff that we've been doing in terms of videos, uh, we're not here really to show performance or benchmarks. That's later on for the written review, uh, which will be done by Chris. Um, this is more about the actual performance sort of looks and the aesthetics of the card and what you actually get on you know inside so a bit in a way like an unboxing but we are going to look uh, a little bit more detail into the actual card instead of just getting it out and saying there you go check out the review so um, I'm just going to pause the camcorder for now and bring you in and you can have a look at the uh, Sapphire Radeon HD 7950 and um, hopefully we can uh, see exactly what this card is all about and what Sapphire have done in terms of the cooler and what sort of specs we've got as well so guys, this is the uh, box for the Sapphire Radeon HD7950. So straight away, we can see exactly what they've done in terms of packaging. They've tried to sort of give it this army feel, which a lot of people seem to be doing lately. Motherboards sort of with the MSI and the gigabytes, and now obviously this as well, uh, which obviously opens up a, a pathway for them to ba you know bundle in things like Battlefield 3. Not really going to spend too much time on the box, but we have to sort of make you aware that it is an overclock edition, which means that the core clock speed has been raised from um, 800 megahertz to 900 megahertz. The memory is still the same at 1250, so 5 gigahertz effective. Uh, it comes with um, tricks as well, HDMI cable like we expect, and all the other um, sort of AMD features that they've got in here. 3 gig of GDDR5 on a 384 bit interface. Turning things around, nothing too exciting on the side, and the back is pretty much what we'd expect from Sapphire with a little bit of blurb about the actual 7950, what's included in the box, and some of the main features. So let's get sort of straight into it and uh, get this unboxed, and we can have a look at exactly what comes included, and then uh, have a look at the card. Now what we're also going to do, we haven't ever done it before, um, I did say that we're not really going to include any benchmarks, but we will. What we're actually do is we're just sort of give a, a quick view while we're testing it so you can see the results that we're going to be getting when we actually uh, write the written review for this. So let's open this up. I'm going to put the card to one side so we can have a look at exactly what accessories come included first and foremost. So inside, pretty much what we expect. So we get a, uh, we get two Molex to six-pin PCI Express power cables. We also get a HDMI to DVI port, a DVI to VGA adapter, a uh, quite lengthy, uh, I believe it's 1.8 meter HDMI cable, mini display port to full size display port adapter, flexible crossfire bridge, 
We also get a Sapphire product registration leaflet, which has your uh, Sapphire SSC Gold membership code and everything on there. We also get the driver installation CD with case badge sticker and a quick install guide, which you're not really ever going to need the quick install guide, but it's there if need be. So uh, let's just quickly pack this away and then we can get to obviously the bit that everyone's waiting for, which is the card itself. So if I just move this to one side. So the card itself comes in an anti-static bag, as you'd expect, and then taken it out of there reveals the card itself. So let's just move all the packaging to one side. So the card itself, I'm just going to sort of rotate this down a little bit. Okay, so this is a Sapphire HD 7950, which straight away we can see has got a dual fan design on there, both branded with Sapphire on there. It's got a plastic cooler, and the plastic cooler actually covers over the um, heat sink and copper heat pipe design. So we can say we can see straight away at the bottom that there's plenty of heat pipes coming out the bottom to help dissipate the heat, and obviously the uh, twin fans will help expel that heat directly away from the uh, aluminium heat sink which is underneath. So obviously this runs PCI Express 3.0 or Gen 3, depending on how you want to say it, which at the moment doesn't really give you any benefit because we are waiting on the third generation uh, Intel processors or as it's been rumoured because we can't confirm Ivy Bridge but we all know what it's going to be called anyway. In terms of power I mean it pretty much said it straight away when we looked in the accessories two six pin PCI Express power adapters and we also have the facility for Crossfire. Now these cards don't come cheap the 7900 series aren't the cheapest cards on the market but what we will find is there are some people out there who have got more money in the sense and they will buy one of these, two of these, three or even four. So you've, got, you've really got the facility to really sort of push your system by um, using the crossfire functions of it. So you could get another four cards, put them in and get quad crossfire, uh, which is, you know, great performance. Nothing's going to really beat it, um, even sort of some of the dual GPU cards, but the facility's there if you have got more money in the sense. In terms of connectivity, we can see uh, very, very similar, well, exactly the same actually as what the XFX had, which is a dual link DVI port, HDMI port, which we have got the adapter for as well to turn it into DVI, and two mini display ports. Now, um, we've also got the adapter for one of the mini display ports. Up here, we can see there's a, a lot of, uh, a mass amount of ventilation ports um, to expel that heat because as we've the 7900 series just like the 7970 they can get quite hot and they can get quite noisy and I think that's now why we've seen the 7950 being released um, with all these custom cooler designs yeah there is a reference card out there but um, people like XFX, Sapphire have really been um, pushing for launch the custom cooler design to really keep them temperatures down and hopefully help with the acoustic values as well so that is basically a quick sort of overview of the 7950 from Sapphire. Um, it is an overclocked edition, so as we say, it has got um, a core clock speed of 900 megahertz instead of 800, but the memory is still the same at 1250. Obviously, that can be pushed yourself by using the Trix utility, which is uh, Sapphire's own overclocking utility, and you may be able to push this card even further. And from what we can hear and what we've actually found from the other card that we've got the XFX, uh, there is quite a lot of headroom and quite a lot of scope for overclocking this particular um, GPU, the 7950 and the 7970. So what we're going to do now is we're going to stick this into our machine. We're going to get it running um, a few of the benchmarks that we do at 1680 by 1050, 1920 by 1080, as well as uh, Ifinity 5760 by 1080. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get this in our system now and uh, hopefully you guys can see the, the true potential behind it. Sorry everyone, um, we're here now um, benching this card, so as you can see we've got the Sapphire HD 7950OC sitting in our Asus Maximus 4 Extreme Z, there's a 2700K in there and uh, plenty of uh, Corsair Vengeance memory, uh, so yeah we've got 16 gig in total and th this is our normal setup for um, doing GPU tests and then if we go over here you can see we've got our three uh, AOC 27 inch monitors and we just really want to show you some of the settings that we're going to be using for um, one of the games that we're benching which is Batman Arkham City so resolution 5760 by 1080 obviously iFinity VSync turned off um, other than that we've left everything on default apart from enabling the DirectX 11 features 
Um, so yeah, we're going to go straight into it and see what sort of results we can get. And uh, hopefully it should be quite promising. Now, Batman Arkham City is a fairly new benchmark for us. We haven't really tested a lot of cards with it, so we haven't got anything to compare to. But it will still give you a, a good idea of uh, you know how it can run on three 27-inch monitors, uh, which natively they all run at 1920 by 1080 or this will obviously appeal to people who've got 24 inch monitors because it's the same resolution so um, yeah just waiting for Batman to load up now which for some reason takes its time sometimes and uh, yeah sometimes sort of plays about a little bit So that's a bit of a fail on our part for uh, the video, but as you know, when you're doing things like this and you're not cutting and chopping and editing, things do go wrong. So the way it's meant to be played, NVIDIA, even though we're using an AMD card, very interesting. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to use them settings 5760 by 1080 with DirectX 11 on and uh, sort of go from there and we should have this in... Uh, some pretty sweet looking graphics as well um, I'm a really really big fan of iFinity so uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy this uh, once again we're getting more problems this time with the wonderful games for Windows Live telling us that it needs to download the profile which is always good fun so while that doing that um, yeah if we just go back over here I just really want to emphasize on this card because it's something that we noticed um, it's quiet with the XFX 7950 which we've got sitting up here in our stack of graphics cards on top of uh, the NAS boxes, we've got a Thecus and a QNAP um, yeah the XFX was quite loud even when just sort of sitting in a game like we are over here um, whereas this even if I sort of get closer I'm not sure how this is going to come out in the video but generally it's uh, not noisy at all so, Batman Arkham City. If you haven't played this game, I really recommend you go and get it because it is absolutely fantastic. So if we go to Options, and then the last one's obviously Benchmark, we can uh, sort of see how this is going to be running. So straight away we know why Finity's working because we've got a tiny little logo down there. But uh, yeah, hopefully this will give you an insight as to what iFinity looks like in Batman Arkham City as well, um, as well as in terms of the performance so yeah that's pretty much how it looks and if you haven't ever played this game especially if you haven't played this game in uh, Ifinity it's really something that you need to do. I'm going to try and zoom back a little bit now but it's hard to fit in three 27 inch monitors and I will apologize now for the autofocus but not much I can do about that apart from obviously turning manual focus on which I've now done for you so if we have a look at sort of uh, what sort of frame rates we're getting once it loads the next bit, we can see that we've got. See, now I'm going to have to turn autofocus back on just to focus on that for you. So, minimum 21 frames, maximum 53, average 48, which is still, you know, no mean feat. It's uh, quite a good result, to be honest, for iFinity. Generally, we see two sort of stepping stones when it comes to graphics, and the first would be um, sort of 30 frames a second, because anything below that really is sort of, in our eyes, unplayable. After that, we do look at um, sort of 60 frames a second because you will see uh, a lot better results. So, in Affinity, you're very rarely going to see over 60 frames a second because of the sheer resolution that you're using of 5760 by 1080. So, anything above 30, we're happy with. Anything above 40, we think is you know a really really good result. And what we're going to show to you here is that we have a minimum of 21, maximum of 53, and an average of 44. So. To be honest, I'm really, really happy with that, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, seeing Batman Arkham City in iFinity. And what we're going to do now is we're going to load up another benchmark um, game that we use, and uh, you'll see um, sort of how how we get on with that basically. So catch you in a mo. Okay, guys. So here we are. Uh, after looking at Batman, we're now going to be looking at Dirt Three. So it's an older game, um, but it's still uh, obviously used quite widely. Uh, in benchmarking and just you know general gaming so um, if you've never played this before it will give you a, a good insight as to what it looks like on through 27 inch screens in iFinity but for now let's get benchmarking so straight down to options into the graphics settings and what we do here is we use a resolution of 5760 by 1080 um, V-Sync off obviously we leave everything on default apart from choosing the preset which we set to ultra um, then once we've actually set it to ultra 
you press escape to go out just to make sure that the settings keep go back in everything's there go down to the bottom and we can see run benchmark test and off we go so let's see once again what sort of results we get with Dirt 3 now as I say for those who have never played Dirt 3 it's a brilliant game um, we have sort of made it that the games we do test with are the sort of games that we know people are going to play hence Batman Arkham City, Alien vs Predator, Dirt 3, Formula 1 2011 and so forth but um, it's also great that we can show you how we test because we do do 1680 by 1050 we do do 1920 by um, 1080 but we are really sort of impressed with the fact that we do Ifinity 5760 by 1080 because there's not a lot of sites out there who do it so uh, you know it's a, a stepping stone for us so I'm going to try and zoom back again so you guys can see exactly what's going on in terms of Dirt 3 and how it looks on Ifinity whilst we're uh, waiting for the benchmark to uh, to finish And it's got to be said for once, this benchmark, uh, he's actually doing alright. Normally he ends up last, sort of position 8th out of 8th, but he's actually third, so he's not doing too bad. And no, this isn't based off my driving, I can tell you that now. It's just a, a computer aided. No, now he's second, he's doing alright. Which means he'll probably end up going first and then end up in an accident. It's generally how things work. I'll be honest, though, I've never, ever, ever seen him finish first. But there you go, finish first. So that's the benchmark, quite short, but um, obviously it does everything that it needs to do and that's the way Codemasters have, have done it. So now we can see the results. Once again, with Dirt 3, we have got more cards that we can sort of compare against. And what we can see here is um, average frames is obviously what we're looking at more than anything. So average frames 36.86, so it is above that magical 30 frames per second number which is good in our books, um, but obviously you can tweak your settings if you want slightly higher results, but bearing in mind this is at 5760 by 1080. Uh, for most people, they're, they're not going to be running this particular setup, they're going to be running 1920 by 1080 or 1680 by 1050. So what, we did, what we'd actually do is invite you to uh, look at our, our written review where you'll see all the results of uh, some of the latest cards, including this one, and uh, we'll link all that in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And if you're watching this on etechnics.com, we'll link over to the normal written review so you can see it all there. So, um, yeah, basically that's just showing uh, a couple of the benchmarks, which we don't normally show in videos, but we thought we would with the 7950 from Sapphire. Um, if you do want to see more benchmarks and a, a more technical sort of view of this particular card, then uh, head over to etechnics.com and we'll link all the stuff uh, below this video. So uh, until next time, see you later guys.